Okay, so I'm going to talk about the limits of practical sublinear circuit computation, which is a joint work with Ilet and Yoval. Secure two-party computation allows a set of two parties to compute a joint function on their inputs in such a way that the honest party receives the correct output and the output is the only new information leaked. And we want this to hold in the presence of an adversary. And in our work, uh, for simplicity, the adversary is going to be semi-honest and our negative result will translate to the malicious setting. So we live in a world with uh, uh, ever-expanding volumes uh, of data and our ability to collect and analyze this data increases our understanding. And while big data technology offers great promises, it poses a challenge. We want to compute uh, and, and perform complex computations while preserving the privacy. And we want to ask this guy to perform like complex computation on big data and secure computation, and we don't want this to happen. So the efficiency of secure multi-party, uh, two-party computation protocols on big data refers to how much uh, data we need to transfer during the execution of the protocol, referred to as communication complexity, and how quickly the protocol runs, referred to as computational complexity. So we don't want to have uh, complexities that grow linear with the input size of the database. And we have uh, actually all generic protocols that we know they have sublinear communication complexity in uh, the size of the database, like fully homomorphic encryption and PIR-based protocols. However, these protocols pay the price of high computational complexity, which is linear in the input size of the database. And in fact, it's like bad linear in the sense that it doesn't require symmetric uh, crypt operation, but it requires heavy public key operations. So ideally, we would like to have sublinear computational complexity as well. And if we stack with uh, linear computational complexity, it better be symmetric key operations and not heavy public key operations. So from now on, when I will refer to communication complexity, I will always mean sublinear. So we saw that the PAR protocols and the FHC protocols, they have linear computational complexity. See here, I mark them with the red sign. But there are some exceptions. So there are some combinatorial problems, and which are actually some graph problems, where like the two parties have some like uh, parts of the graph that actually do enjoy sublinear computation and communication complexity. Like it's the median, convex hull, single source order destination, approximate set cover, and all fair sort of distance, and minimum spanning trees. So there are these works, Agraval et al., Brickell, Matikov, and Selat, and Mutu, they provide it, as I call them, easy uh, protocols, which enjoy sublinear communication and computation. So are these like uh, functionalities here a special case? So are all, can we have more functionalities with uh, these co uh, complexities? So can we characterize which functions can and cannot be computed with sublinear overhead? Okay, are these the median problem and the convex hall only like isolated cases? So can we classify these functions? We're going to um, actually provide a framework for separating hard and easy problems. Uh, and once we have such a framework, we can actually uh, provide formal reduction showing if the problems actually uh, are hard. It's like the NP completeness where we, like, we can show that some variants of some protocols are easy and some of them are hard. And moreover, we're going to provide some intermediate hardness, which is going to capture protocols that are neither easy or nor hard. It's like with NP complete, NP complete let's like imagine that factoring, factoring is conjectured to be like, uh, not to be NP hard, but we believe it's hard. And we're going to consider three types of functionalities. So we have the two-sided functionalities where both parties receive the output. Then we have one-sided functionalities where only one party receives the output here. And the one-sided functionalities are going to imply the secret shared output functionalities where one party, uh, it can be viewed as one party uh, that receives the output in a secret shared form. The brackets mean secret shared. And then he can send the secret shared output to the other party. So this is a two-sided functionality 
where parties get secret shared version of the outputs. And this is very useful when we want to compose many MPC protocols, like put a, uh, an MPC protocol in a larger MPC protocol. So we're going to take the one-sided version of all these problems and the secret server of all these problems, and in fact, we're going to show that they, they are hard. Yeah, the answer is true. <laughs> so to capture uh, this hardness, uh, the measure we're, that we're going to use is private information retrieval. Let me first define you uh, the problem. So the problem is very simple. We have Alice and she wants to uh, get some entry from a remote database. So she sends a request, and she wants to receive back the entry at location I. Okay? And the privacy is that we don't want the server to learn anything about the index I. So is this possible? There's a trivial solution. So Alice can send like a generic uh, request like wake up. And then the database sends back like uh, all the entries that it has. Okay, so does this satisfy the, the privacy notion? Yes, because I mean, the database sends all the data, so he cannot learn anything about the index I of, the, of Alice. However, this is very inefficient. The communication complexity is huge. Imagine that uh, the server is Google and uh, Alice asks for like a website and then the server sends back the whole internet and they say, okay, try to find your website. So what do we want to do? Oops. We have this uh, non-triviality requirement that we want the communication complexity to be sublinear in the input size of the database. And based on the current state of the art on one server peer protocols, like they require communication complexity which is sublinear in the input size, but they require uh, a lot of computational complexity. And this is inherent even if we have preprocessing. And as I said before, it even requires a lot of public key uh, operations. And despite these great advances in lattice-based peer protocols, like there are the system X peer and SIL peer, still these systems are magnitudes uh, of orders like um, slower than symmetric key operation. Yeah, and we cannot have one server information theoretic peer, so if we, if we have preprocessing, like it's not going to help. Uh, yeah, and also there's some more uh, works uh, assuming some preprocessing, but they're still very slow. So given the current state of affairs, like we can see that peer is really the measure that can really capture the hardness of 2PC protocols, because if a protocol reduces to peer, then it really means that it's going to have linear computational complexity and even given preprocessing. So this brings me to our framework. So we define uh, peer hardness. And uh, a problem is peer hard if any secure protocol uh, for this problem implies non-trivial peer on a large database. Non-trivial, I mean that we have sublinear communication complexity. And if uh, this happens, that means that this problem really inherits all like the bad consequences that peer has, like the bad communication complexity. And this is like the simplest notion that we provide in our paper. We say that the two-party functionality is peer hard if there is a single server protocol on a database of, uh, of the size n to n making a single call to the function f. And this uh, notion, it, we can actually extend it to multiple calls. So now I'm going to show you like a simple example why the one-sided median pro uh, problem is peer hard. So what is the median protocol? Like two parties have a list of some uh, numerical entries and they want to find the median of their uh, combined set. And it's one-sided, so only Alice will get the output. So to prove that the one-sided median is peer hard, we're going to construct a peer protocol making only a single oracle call to this function f to the median functionality. So how we're we going to do that? Here we have Alice and Bob. Uh, no, it's not Bob, it's the server. Um, so how we're we going to uh, make our call to the media functionality? So for simplicity, suppose that the server has only two entries. So what he's going to do? He's going to sort the two entries. And then suppose that Alice is interested in the first element, say i is 0. So then the two parties are going to call the, the median functionality with these inputs. 
like D0 and D1, and the minimum element, where the minimum element is like the smallest element in the field where the numbers lie. Okay? So now if we run the median protocol, so you can see that the order of the elements is going to be like this. And the output, the medium is going to be like the D0. So in that case, at least we received D0. And here we can see that we constructed peer, where Alice is getting D0. And likewise, if I is interested in the second element, this is going to put uh, the max element in the, in the field. And then the ordering is going to be like this. Okay, now D, D1 is the median element. And then the protocol is going to give D1 to Alice. Okay, that was the toy example. And for the generic case, when we have like many data in the database, uh, the client is trying to make the set such as the median element is the element that it wants from the database. So you can actually notice that this reduction completely fails if we're in the two-sided case. Because if the server receives the element D0 and D1, he can really see the index of the client, what he asked. So this reduction completely fails. And these are the peer hard uh, problems uh, that we saw in the paper. So we, we saw it for the median, the convex hall, and these problems. I'm not going to repeat them. And just uh, as a side note, in the paper, like to make this reduction, we use a combinatorial tool, which is the VC dimension, usually used in learning theory. Um, so this measure uh, tells us about the capacity or the richness of a function. So a functionality is pretty hard if it has some certain VC dimension. And essentially, we're saying how much uh, peer we can squeeze out of some functionality. And if, for example, uh, functionality has high VC dimension, then it's peer hard. And if it has low VC dimension, then it's not peer hard. Okay, I'm not going to talk more about this. It's just a side note. So are we happy now? So we proved that one-sided functionalities um, are hard, peer hard. And we have all these two-sided functionalities that the previous works of Mutu and Abi said uh, that they are easy. Okay, they have sublinear communication and computation. So are we happy now? Is this a generic phenomena that two-sided functionalities um, are easy? So maybe not. <laughs> Let's see. So take this real, uh, uh, real scenario. So we have like a, a party, like Alice again. So she has a location in Manhattan. And she wants to go to a restaurant. And Bob has like the map of all the restaurants. As you see, there are too many. So now we have the nearest neighbor neighborhood problem where uh, it outputs the nearest location, like the nearest restaurant, to Alice's location. Okay? And Alice wants to keep her location private. So this is the setting of the problem. And why is this a two-sided functionality? Why we should send the output to Bob? But this is like we are acting on the output. We are going to the restaurant. So this information is going to be publicly known. So it's inherently two-sided uh, functionality. And it captures uh, natural problems that we want to solve. So based on this example, we're going to define uh, semi-peer hardness, which is a relaxation of peer hardness, where we only have privacy if the the element in the database is only uh, a one. Okay, so if the element in the database is zero, then the server is going to learn the location i of the client. Okay, it's, there's some asymmetry here. So you only, the server only learns the output if um, the entry is zero. Okay, so this is very useful also for some other examples. Suppose that you have a list of candidates and you are revealing the winning candidate. So the fact that you are revealing the winning candidate, everybody's going to know that. But you want to hide the rest of the candidates. So this notion motivates this kind of problems. So now I'm going to show you why uh, the nearest neighbor problem is two-sided. Oh, this counts like downtown. Okay. So I have 10 minutes, right? So remember that uh, in, in the semi-peer notion, the server gets the index i of the client only if uh, the element in the database is zero. So 
So what we're going to do, we're going to build again a peer protocol using only a single invocation of the nearest neighborhood problem. So again, suppose for simplicity that the database has like four entries, 0, 1, 0, 1. So how are we going to do the mapping of the inputs, like the inputs that they need to use in the na nearest neighborhood problem? So if the entry is zero, then we get the circle with center C. And if the entry is zero, we are picking a location on the circle. Okay, so it's going to be like that. So when we have a zero, we pick uh, a location on the circle. And if it is a one, we pick uh, a location outside of the circle. So this is how the server is going to encode his database. So now suppose that Alice is interested in some uh, location. Suppose she's interested in location three. So how is she going to pick her location? So it's going to take like uh, uh, the location that intersects the line that crosses the center with the element that she's interested and another circle that has like half radius from the bigger circle. Okay. So now, if we run uh, the, two, the nearest neighborhood problem, where uh, Alice gives the location x, y, which is this one, the red one, and Bob gives the center and all these like uh, four points here, so you can see that if the location is one, so we are here in this example, so the nearest element to this location is the center. It's not this element, okay, because this is half radius of the circle. So this means that we are revealing to the server the center. So this means that we didn't reveal the location i, so we are good. And now suppose that the location is like um, is zero. So the client gives this element if she's, in, if she's interested in this in the first element. So in that case, the nearest element to the red spot is the center and the element that we want. So in that case, we see that the server does learn uh, the location, the index i that Alice asked. So this is really semi-peer. So you learn the output, the server learns the output only if uh, the entry in the database is zero. So that's why it implies uh, semi-peer. And you can imagine how it goes if you have like more elements in the database. Okay, so that was an example to show what, uh, that uh, nearest neighborhood is a semi-peer hard problem. And in the paper, we saw that uh, other natural problems are uh, semi-peer, like single source, single destination, shortest path, shortest list selection, and closest destination. H here are problems that we want to pick, like, uh, say, the minimum or maximum element from a list. So we also show, like, information theoretic separations between uh, semi-peer and peer. And in fact, we proved that we cannot construct peer making a one uh, call to semi-peer. And in fact, in the paper, we can afford more calls. I'm not going to be specific here about this. So this really means that semi-peer really captures the true complexity of some natural problems. Then we uh, give an evidence that actually semi-peer is as hard as peer, because we saw that the existence of polylogarithmic semi-peer implies the existence of slightly sublinear peer using an adaptive uh, reduction that makes multiple calls to semi-peer, and our reduction uses locally decodable codes. And in fact, if we want to show that the polylogarithmic peer implies polylogarithmic, uh, no, if we want to construct polylogarithmic peer from polylogarithmic semi-peer, we will have a breakthrough in uh, coding theory, because for that we will need to construct this dream locally decodable codes where they have like constant query complexity and polynomial rate. So for the rest of the talk, like I have five minutes, I'm going to show you how we can construct polylogarithmic semi-peer. No, how we are going to construct from polylogarithmic semi-peer slightly sublinear peer. Okay, and we're going to use uh, Q query L L locally decodable codes, and we're going to make two to the Q adaptive calls to semi-peer, okay? So we're gonna call the semi-peer two to the Q times to construct peer. So as a first step, I'm gonna reduce semi-peer to what we call round half peer. What is round half peer? Uh, is a probabilistic peer where the server learns uh, 
the index with half probability. So how we're going to do it's very simple. So we get the database, and essentially we double the database, adding the complement of the database. So if this is like 00011, then the complement will be 11100. Okay, so we double the database. And now if uh, the client wants to ask for, say, entry i, he's going to ask either for entry i or i, i plus, one, plus n, where n is the size of the database. So these two elements, one will be zero and one will be one, because we took the complement here. So this really means that with half probability, the server will get the answer, get the index i. Okay, so having the, uh, this, now I'm going to show you how we can construct from round half peer, peer. So how we're going to do that? So the server is getting the database, which is like, uh, like this, and he encodes it using a locally decodable code. Then the client, he's going to like, um, run the decoder of the locally decodable code to uh, get the index that he's interested in. So locally decodable codes, they can be viewed as one round multi-server um, peer, where if we want to access uh, some uh, entry i in the original database, we need to do like Q queries to the database. Right? That's why the locally decodable code is Q query. Okay? So to access uh, entry i, we need to make Q calls to the database. So for, on the slide, I assume that Q is 5. So how we're going to do that? So to recover entry i, we need to make 5 calls. So because this is run semi-peer, it means that each query leaks with half probability. Okay? But we want to build peers, so we cannot afford any like, leakage. So how are we going to do? So imagine that we are playing a video game, and we are telling you if you lose two times, then your device is going to self-destruct. Okay? So what you're going to do? So what you're going to do? Okay, if you lose once, you restart the game, and the device is there, right? So what you're going to do? You ask like one query, and if uh, it leaks the, the bit, then you restart again. So since I assume that Q is 5, so now each query leaks with probability 1 half. So the probability that uh, nothing leaks is 1 over 2 to the 5, right? And this means that the expected number of times that we need to run to restart actually the the reduction is uh, 2 to the 5. Okay, so this is why the reduction works. And we proved that we can have 2 to the q, which is here 5 calls. In fact, is q times 2 to the q. Okay, so this is the, the reduction. So to conclude, we gave this uh, framework for uh, classifying like if a, a problem is hard or easy based on peer hardness. And then we also saw, based on our framework, that some problems are peer hard. So changing slightly some functions, we saw that when we go from one-sided, from two-sided to one-sided, we saw that it's actually hard. They are peer hard. And then we also introduced the semi-peer hardness, which capture uh, the complexity of some natural problems, as we saw. Here is like our taxonomy, so we have all these easy problems. Then we have the semi-peer hard problems, and here are the peer hard problems. So we, we provided this uh, classification of hard and easy problems, but as you know, like reality is more complex, and like NP completeness, you should take our framework with a grain of salt. And there are many future directions uh, to explore. So for example, like can we have um, a hierarchy of hardness beyond semi-peer and peer hardness? For example, can we have like different levels of somewhat homomorphic uh, encryption, which is actually uh, more um, inefficient than, than peer? And let's say if we want to do that for uh, polynomials of degree two polynomials. Because we saw in Safi's talk, like degree one computations with uh, homomorphic encryption uh, is easy, so what about degree two? And then also we want to have a better understanding of our semi-peer to peer uh, uh, reduction. So here we saw that we had adaptive calls. We were restarting. And we saw that if we're going to have a non-adaptive reduction, we need to like build this dream locally decodable codes. 
And then also this uh, vicious dimensional measure that I, uh, that I mentioned, uh, we want to see like, if it can capture actually two-sided uh, functionalities. It works very good with one-sided, or with two-sided, uh, we want to uh, explore this even more. And what about multi-party functionalities? There are more problems, but I'm going to end here. Thank you.